when uh, Peggy's husband, Mike, passed away, uh, he wanted the Catholic funeral. And she said, Mike, we've been going to All Saints for eight years. What are we going to do? But he had a good buddy named John, Father John, Catholic priest from Plainfield. And he came and helped me with the service. And he put a little prayer on Facebook yesterday that uh, I'd like to just share. It's a very simple prayer. This is what it says. For those who are weary, we ask for sanctuary. For those of you who are staying, we pray for safety. For those of you who are fighting, we pray for peace. For those whose hearts are breaking, comfort. For those who see no future, hope. Well, that's all I have to say, amen. You know, that's, uh, that really is, in a few words, a prayer for what's going on right now. Speaking of the power of nice, a little diversion. Remember last week I talked about that young man from Sandburg who parks here and was incredibly rude and kind of nasty to me? And you all wondered if he'd come back and apologize. Well, he did. They were off Monday, so Tuesday morning he parked right in front of the church and came in the door. He looked totally different. He actually had a little smile on his face. And, but he, he looked at me and he said, are, are, are you the guy that I was rude to last week? And I said, yeah, I'm the guy. <laughs> Reverend the guy. And he said, you know, I, I was having a horrible day. I was late for school. I came in. I didn't even look at you and I was rude. And I ran over to Sandberg and I really, really apologize. And it felt good because it just... Not so much for me, but just to know that he made the effort to admit he was wrong. Well, the next day, he drives into the parking lot like 45 miles an hour, parks his car, and I have his new sticker for him. So I go out there, and he gets out of his car, looks at me, and he runs to me, and he says, I was going too fast, wasn't I? <laughs> and I said, yes. And we laughed, and we shook hands. And it was just kind of a nice moment, because it was like his face was transfigured because he just looked like a different person when he wasn't angry and rude. And a little thing yesterday, because I don't have a little, I was at the gas station. And I, I know nothing about cars and trucks. I know that every 3,000 miles, I take it in for an oil change, and I know how to fill my own gas. But I was totally out of washer fluid, so I got to that, I, and I pulled the thing from my truck, and the hood popped, but there's a secondary switch somewhere under the hood. And I could not find it. And I'm getting, I just go, what am I going to do? And this guy pulls up next to me. He's got the same kind of truck. And I went and knocked on his, I said, can you help me? And he doesn't speak much English. And I said, and so he came over and flipped it up for me. And I said, thank you very much. And he said, you're welcome. And he had a deep European accent. And just his accent reminded me of what's going on in the world and how there's a whole bunch of men and women on the other side of the world that wishes they could drive their car or truck into a gas station and fill it up and go back home and be with their family. And you know, you look at the pictures this morning, I saw one picture, there was a coffee shop and a bar and another building and they were just ashes to ashes and dust to dust. And then of course the pictures of all these people trying to get out of their country, little kids carrying teddy bears like this and a little backpack trying to get out of the country. And I just wanted so much for that not to be. And I'm sometimes ashamed of myself of all the things that I take for granted on a day-to-day -day basis. The gospel lesson for today is a good one. It's about Jesus' transfiguration. He and three of his disciples are on the mountaintop, and something happens up there. There was light. There was a transformation of who Jesus was. And there was that voice to the disciples saying, Beloved, this is my son with whom I am well pleased. And the disciples, they're alone with Jesus. They said, we've got to build some shelters here and stay here. And Jesus says, no, we cannot stay on the mountaintop. We have to go down the mountain into a world that can be angry and tough and upside down and backwards. Because that is where the gospel needs to be preached. There was no way that Jesus was going to let his disciples stay there because it's easy to believe when you're on the mountaintop. But when you get into the real world that we live in, sometimes it's not so easy to believe. 
I think all of us maybe have had a few transfiguration moments where maybe the light shines, something happens, and in a moment of time we kind of rediscover what's important and what's not. To me, the last two years have been a transfiguration journey. Stuff that I took for granted about myself and my family, about you and the church, they have come crashing down. And I think in my own way, and maybe in your own way, I've kind of discovered and rediscovered the majesty, the fragility of the human spirit. And sometimes how God lives in moments where we don't think he's present, but we gotta believe inside that he is walking with us. I don't know how we get through this without that kind of faith. And I think of that young man from Sandburg. Maybe last week he had a transfiguration moment or in his own self-centered and busy little way that he kind of rediscovered the power of respect and just being courteous and nice to somebody else. And even that little moment that I couldn't get the hood of my truck up and a guy comes over to help me and I hear his accent and thinking about where he might be from. A transfiguration moment where you can't take anybody or any moment that we have for granted. You know, people now are praying for peace all over the world. Even the average citizen in Russia is praying for peace and the lack of violence. I wish with all my heart that Putin and the people in power would kind of get off that mountaintop of power and control and come down the mountain and have a transfiguration moment and kind of rediscover what God's spirit is all about. That taking advantage of other people is not the way we should live our lives. I don't know if that'll ever happen, but we can't stop praying. And you know, I, like you, and you watch, turn the TV on and you see the ashes of destruction, coffee shops and little stores and places of business that are no longer there. I think of those words, ashes to ashes and dust to dust. And in the middle of all those ashes is the message of hope. And I realize that what Ash Wednesday stands for has more power than I ever thought possible. Amen. If you're able to, please rise for the creed.